As we just saw, it was yet another bumpy week here on the Korean Peninsula. North Korea ramped up a weapons test in a show of military might this week. Now, what's triggered the show of aggression and what do all these missiles mean for peace on the peninsula? Our defense correspondent Kim Yeon-sung, who's been following the regime's latest, is with us today. Welcome, Yeon-sung. Thank you, Tommy. So North Korea lately really has been trying to flaunt its wide range of military might. Now, each weapons test this week has involved a different missile, including what North Korea claims to be a submarine-launched strategic cruise missile, a solid-field ballistic missile, and what's suspected to be the Hwasong-17, the intercontinental ballistic missile. Right, so various types of missiles in just a week. Now, this time, the issue of aggression and belligerence is very much intentional, right? Yes, absolutely. So this week, Seoul and Washington held their biggest joint re uh, drills in years this week, codenamed Freedom Shield. And there was the first bilateral summit in 12 years between the leaders of South Korea and Japan. So there was a lot going on for North Korea to really register as a threat and for them to really harsh up their fiery tone. Right, which we'll get back to in just a moment. But for now, let's walk us through the missiles throughout the week. Let's first start with the summary launched missiles. Right, so South Korea's military detected a fresh round of submarine launched missiles fired from North Korea's east coast. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff described these projectiles that traveled over 600 kilometers as unidentified. But a news report from North Korea's state-led news agency later said the submarine launches were of strategic cruise missiles. Now, the word strategic is used to describe a more formidable weapon that yields more power than what would be called a tactical weapon. And it also hints at the ability to carry a nuclear warhead. And this is especially noteworthy because if North Korea's reports are true, this would be the first success case of North Korea's submarine-launched strategic cruise missile, which shows their advances in firearms. Right, and the submarine-launched missiles are especially more challenging to, to, to detect. And it wasn't just submarine-launched missiles. North Korea also fired short-range ballistic missiles. Let's talk about that. Right, the KN-23. Uh, the photo suggests that these missiles could be the KN-23, which is a solid field short-range ballistic missile. And this one is a tactical guided weapon, but it's solid field, which means it's easier to launch quickly. And it's also designed to fire, uh, to fly at a lower trajectory. So it has a shorter flight time and it's upgraded to perform maneuvers to avoid interception. So it's also harder to track. This time, North Korea also traveled a little farther down south to test this weapon than from where they usually test weapons. So experts say that this means that they were trying to send a bigger warning to South Korea. Right, and we cannot not talk about the intercontinental ballistic missile. The North claims it to be the Hwasong-17, the most formidable missile involved in this week's weapons test. Please talk about that. Right, absolutely. So traveling about 1,000 kilometers to the East Sea, the missile flew at a maximum altitude of 6,000 kilometers after being shot at a high angle. Uh, reports say that it landed around 250 kilometers west of Japan's Oshima Island in Hokkaido Prefecture. Analysis of the flight data suggests, and the, according to the state-led news agency, Korean Central News Agency this morning, uh, this could have been an intercontinental ballistic missile, likely the Hwasong-17. And this would mark North Korea's seventh successful ICBM launch since 2017. Right. According to the Japanese defense minister, the Hwasong-17 missile can reach the U.S. mainland if fired from a normal angle, right? Right. It has a potential range of 15,000 kilometers. And South Korea's JCS said that intelligence agents are working closely with U.S. counterparts to investigate North Korea's claims and their actual military might. Okay, the Yeonseng, then the question is, till when is North Korea gearing up its weapons tests from missile launches and missile launches in various types and also from various locations? Right, so experts say that uh, North Korea's threats could continue most likely throughout the Freedom Shield. So until next Thursday, I'm going to be on standby next week as well. So to our viewers, stay tuned to Arirang News.
Professor Pa Gong-gon, a leading expert in North Korean studies at Ihua University, said that this situation is nothing new. It's reminiscent of 2017, and North Korea stepped up its weapons tests back then and really tried to show off its ICBM developments uh, when former U.S. President Do Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un both ratcheted up their fiery rhetoric. And also judging from the past patterns, North Korea tends to act out when it's struggling internally and really, it's not doing well, especially with the North Korea's economy. So it's expected for North Korea to roll out more of their firearms tests in the coming days. Also this week, North Korea was not too happy about this whole Tokyo bilateral summit that happened for the first time in 12 years. Experts say that the regime would have seen this as a great threat, which is most likely the reason why that North Korea rolled out its ICBM test on this day. And if the trilateral ties between South Korea, the U.S., and Japan are strengthened, North Korea's leadership could feel very backed into a corner. Right. You said Thursday until the North will continue to launch its military activities, but who knows what's in hands of the leader, Kim Jong-un. Now, Yeon Sing, how are senior Korean, uh, South Korean officials and the international community reacting to the North's latest provocations? Well, tell me, as you can imagine, not too happily, uh, National Security Advisor Kim Song un held an emergency standing committee with key players, including President Yoon Seok Yeol on Thursday. President Yoon said at this meeting that North Korea's reckless threats will have clear repercussions and called on the allies to step up their joint drills. The Indo-Pacific Command highlighted the destabilizing impact of Pyongyang's weapons program and consulted its allies about the problem. And the U.S. State Department Press Secretary Ned Price also called on North Korea to stop these threats and engage in dialogue. Right, lots of developments here on the Korean Peninsula this week and more to come in the coming week. Absolutely, Dami. All right, so do keep us posted next week as well. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today.